This is Ethan with Fundamentals of Finance, CFA charter holder and investment professional. And next in our series about the psychology of money, we're going to talk about anchoring. This video will have three parts. What is anchoring? How do salespeople and marketers use it against you? And how does it lead to bad investment decisions? I'll also show you how to avoid getting caught in these traps along the way. Let's dive in. Anchoring essentially refers to the psychological phenomenon that when we're told something in advance, that serves as an anchor that biases how we view everything else going forward. And after that, it's hard for our minds to move too far away from the first piece of information that we received, kind of like an anchor. For example, there was a video game called Plants vs. Zombies that came out in 2009. Researchers decided to use it to do a study where they gave the game to three groups of people. The first group was told that critics had rated the game a 91. The second group was told that it had been given a rating of 61. And the third group wasn't told anything in advance. Everyone was then asked to play the game and give it their own rating. On average, the group that had been told it had a high rating from critics gave it an 85. The group that had been told it had a low rating from critics only gave it a 71. And the group that hadn't been anchored at all gave it a 79. None of these people realized they were being anchored, but hearing that number in advance clouded their judgment about their own view of the game. This happens everywhere in life all the time. If you tell your friend that the comedian you're taking him to see is really funny, they're more likely to think they're really funny. Now, sliding your judgment about a comedian or a video game probably isn't the end of the world. But what about your purchasing decisions? When I was in high school, I worked at a sporting goods store. I remember a new treadmill going in, and the price tag said it used to be $1,000, but now it was only $800. I thought that was strange because I knew we'd never sold that treadmill before. So I asked my boss about it, and he told me it was just a gimmick to get people to think they were getting a good deal. Years later, I learned that that was called anchoring. The treadmill never actually cost $1,000 but people became anchored to the original price and thought they were getting a good deal. In reality, the way to overcome this is to just compare current prices and features of all the treadmills, or whatever item you're considering, without considering what they used to be. Not only do you now know that they may never have actually been that price, but think about it logically. You're not paying the price it used to be, you're paying the current price. So the only thing that matters is the current price. It's probably not going back. This is also really common in price negotiations where it's hard to know the true value of something like a car or a house. Right now I'm shopping for a car. It's a very specific car. And if you shot nationwide, the price for the exact same car ranges from about 120,000 to 170,000. When people walk into the dealership and are able to negotiate the dealer down from 170,000 to 160,000, they think they're getting a good deal. It feels great. They're really not. They're being tricked by the anchor of the high initial price tag. I will not be falling into this trap and neither should you. Not only can you avoid this being used against you, but you can actually use it to your advantage. So if you're entering a negotiation for something, whether it be a big purchase or salary negotiation, don't be afraid to go first. Often people don't want to go first because they're afraid to tip their hand, but actually going first gives you a chance to set the anchor. And if it's something like a car where the price is already set, but you know they're anchoring you at way too high of a price, try calling them out on it. Yeah. I'm interested in the car, but I've seen really similar cars listed for much less at other dealerships. Seems like you're trying to anchor me, or you set the price unrealistically high just as a starting point in the negotiation. You don't expect me to fall for that, do you? Then you say nothing and wait until they respond. It may take them a while because you will definitely be catching them off guard. One of three things is likely to happen. Most likely, they'll say something like, yeah, the real price is X, and their starting point has just lowered, and then you can negotiate from there. Or they'll call your bluff about it being cheaper elsewhere, so make sure you're prepared with an example. They might also ask you what price you had in mind, and that's your chance to counter anchor on the low end, below what you are actually hoping to pay. 
It has to be realistic, though, or it won't work. And you try to anchor a Ferrari dealer at $7,000, they'll laugh you right out of the room. The third and least likely response will be to stand their ground and say, no, that's the firm price. If they do, that's when you walk away. After all, if you're being genuine and you really can find similar cars for much less at other dealers, you really don't want to pay that price. Remember, it costs them money to keep the car at the dealer, and they make money by making sales. Once they find a buyer who's interested, they don't want to let them go. So most likely, if you walk away, they'll revert to one of the first two approaches and put the ball back into your court. When it comes to investing, we often anchor on what a stock price used to be in order to judge what it will be, like, it's gone down a lot, so it must be cheap, or it's gone up a lot, so it must be expensive. But no, a stock price's future moves, or a mutual funds, or an ETFs, any investment's future moves, will be driven by what happens in the future. If something is going up or down, you have to ask yourself why it's up or down so much. Let's jump into some real-life examples. In May 2023, NVIDIA reported earnings that were through the roof. It was becoming clear that they were going to be the winner from generative AI. However, after a massive spike, their stock price had risen about 160% in less than five months. And people started asking me if it was time to short it, aka to bet on it to go down. I even did a video on it, caution people against doing that. And what's happened since then? It's up another 250%. Now, did I see that coming? No, I certainly didn't. But I did understand how anchoring was clouding people's judgment. People were anchoring to the prior stock price and thinking it's gone up too much, so it must be expensive. But I knew that it didn't just go up for no reason. It went up because they had a massive new business opportunity that hadn't existed before. And the main thing that was going to drive the stock price going forward was whether that business opportunity turned out to be bigger or smaller than people were expecting at the time. As it turns out, much bigger. You didn't need a crystal ball or a CFA to figure this out. You just needed to be able to recognize how anchoring was making something appear like a great opportunity to short NVIDIA, despite the fact that the past stock price would have no bearing on the future stock price. Sometimes big stock moves are an opportunity to invest because people are irrational and people's buying and selling activity drives the stock market. Often their emotions get the best of them and either cause them to buy too much, setting the price too high, or sell too much, setting the price too low. But the key to spot an opportunity rather than falling into the anchoring trap is to ask yourself why the investment is up or down so much. Do you think that move is justified? Has it gone too far? Or maybe, like in NVIDIA's case, it hasn't gone far enough. A big stock move can be a starting point to finding an interesting opportunity, but it's nothing more than that. The rest comes down to predicting where it will go in the future, and wherever it was in the past has no bearing on that. If you made it this far in this video, I want to sincerely thank you for watching. Just like when you get a new car and all of a sudden you start seeing that car everywhere, just watch. You're about to see anchoring everywhere you go. And now that you've seen this video, anchoring will no longer wear you down. If you found this video helpful, please hit those like and subscribe buttons and stick around for the rest of this series on the psychology of money. And if you have questions or want to continue the investing conversation, check out the link in the description where you can join our free Discord. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.